everybody. Uh, me again, late again. I think it's um, about half ten at night. Um, my mum and I are in London because I've got my gynaecology appointment tomorrow. I think it's just like a, sort of a review of how things have gone so far in the last five or six weeks while I've been on this progesterone break. Um, I always get quite anxious the night beforehand. I mean, not like anxious like my anxiety used to be, but just a little bit like sort of on edge and a bit, I don't know, it's nervous because nervous I don't know what they're going to say, when they're going to want me to next take the progesterone, how much I'm going to have to take, how often I'm going to have to take it. And I just, I don't want to be ill again and I know that the progesterone makes me really poorly and I'm just... I don't want to have to face that, I really want to just carry on with life being good and everything. Um, well, me and my mum have had a really lovely day, so I stayed at mine last night and then um, Kate went over to my mum's and picked her up and then um, we headed to Litchfield and we got the train, it was a bit like deja vu because it feels like we do it all the time at the minute become quite a routine thing for us to get the train, head to London, stay overnight, go to the appointment, blah blah blah, yada yada yada. Um, but we always try and make it fun, I think you have to, otherwise it would be really depressing every time we came to London. So um, yeah, we got the train and then we're staying in an Airbnb this time, which is our first time having booked our own Airbnb, but it's turning out to be really, really quite good. It's close to the hospital and you can make your own food and um, yeah it's like a it's a bit like a hotel because it's like I think five or six bedrooms and then like a shared kitchen and a shared bathroom but it's really nice um, and then my mum and I um, yeah got dinner well we safe self catered so we got dinner and then we headed into Chelsea because it's um, Chelsea well, the Royal Chelsea show or Royal Chelsea Fallower Festival or something like that. I don't remember the exact name of it. But anyway, all around um, like Sloane Square and all in London, there is lots and lots of flowers and like shops have done window displays and big flower displays everywhere. And my mum loves flowers and she was like literally like a kid in a sweet shop. I was like, oh my God, mum, you're like blinkered. Like you're just so... Um, like just well yeah she like went off with both the phones i was like where the hell is she gone she was gone for about 20 minutes then she got off the bus at the wrong stop and we just had to walk like half an hour in the dark not really knowing where we're going just hoping for the best but you know we're home now it's all good <laughs> um and then um also like i'm really trying at the moment to challenge things with my eating disorder because like obviously i've had anorexia and i've had an eating disorder in the past now, what came first, like chicken or egg situation, did my anorexia and eating disorder develop or become so problematic because of my PMDD or um, was that just another thing on its own? Um, I'll never know and I don't need to know. All I need to do is deal with it and move on and keep plodding on with recovery and like I put, oh my gosh, it's so funny. So, like, it's so ironic, really, actually, because my body image is so much better at the moment. And it just goes, proves to me, like, that the more I restrict and engage in my eating disorder behaviours, the worse my body dysmorphia becomes. Like, I am easily, like, I, goodness knows how many sizes bigger than I was, yet my body confidence is so much better. I mean, it's not perfect, but like I have worn shorts today. That is something that I would never, ever have done. Um, and yeah, so I, gosh, I got these shorts out. Well, actually, no, I got rid of all my shorts that didn't fit me, which I didn't actually have the confidence to wear because I hated my body that much. So I bought them, probably wore them for about an hour in the house and then was like, oh God, I look so hideous. I can't go out in them because I thought I was too fat. So yeah got rid of those like probably a year or a year and a half ago when they I just decided that I wasn't going to wear them and <clears throat> they were like I wasn't comfortable wearing them so I got rid of them and then I kept like a pair that fit me and a pair that were a size bigger than that and I tried to put them on today 
I couldn't even get them like barely past my knees and like it was slightly triggering but I thought well you know while I'm in this progesterone free time and life is good this is the time to really challenge my eating disorder so I got on another pair of shorts which um I like more like fashion shorts but they used to be like so big on me it was ridiculous like I was like mum what the hell have you even bought me these for um when she bought them and she was like oh you know well when you're better blah 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 and I was like they are never gonna fit me and yep they just about fit me today like when I say just about I mean if I was much fatter they wouldn't fit um and then um so yeah I went out today in shorts and with my belly on show as you can see in the photos and I felt like naked I'm not even, not even gonna lie I literally felt naked but um yeah I thought everybody else goes out and things like this so, so why don't I nobody knows me around here this is somewhere to challenge it and challenge it while I'm feeling good and everything um so I did and you can see that in the photos um so yeah, that's all for tonight. I'm just going to get a hot drink and go to bed because I'm knackered. Okay, bye guys! <laughs>
running the support group at the local eating disorders charity where I volunteer and I've done this quite a few times before but organisation.com I am normally either super organised and I've planned it like weeks and weeks in advance but that's not very often or I'm like planning it sort of in the hours before hand and getting really stressed trying to cram it all in but today I have planned it and we still have 48 hours to go which is some kind of s achievement for me like it's actually like a small miracle um, I'm feeling quite smug with about that because that means that I don't have to try and um, worry about it and stress about it and be anxious about it all day tomorrow when I've also got obviously loads of other stuff on my mind to do my PMDD and I don't have to try and do it on the train where it makes me feel really ill and I don't have to do it around my own psychology session on Thursday so normally on a Thursday which is the same night as group ones I like get up and sort myself out and then go to therapy and that takes like basically all morning and then I come home and I go to my mum and dad's and get there for about like one and I have lunch and then then I have like about three or four hours and I'm like oh my goodness I've got to do this and I've got to do that and then I get really stressed and it's not good for me not good for me at all and so now it's all done and I'm all happy